I saw this one fellow standing out on the right hand side by himself. I couldn't see him above his chest and to his face, so I couldn't tell whether he's a young man or old man. Well, it didn't make any difference. I aimed right at the middle of his chest. And when they started moving our way, I pulled the trigger. He jumped up in the air, raised both hands above his head, dropped his rifle, fell over backwards. I knew I'd killed him. Well, a few days later, he showed up in my mind. Just a couple of seconds, he jumped in the air, dropped his rifle, and fell over backwards. He kept doing that. I was afraid that, that some of the guys may have thought I was a coward. In fact, I couldn't find a good reason to tell somebody about it at that time all those years. 23-year-old Tom Blakey was a paratrooper with the 82nd Airborne Division on D-Day. At around 1 a.m. that morning, Blakey jumped behind enemy lines in Normandy, France. His mission was to capture La Fierre Bridge and stop the Germans from sending reinforcements as American troops stormed Utah Beach. There were over 500 U.S. casualties during that three-day battle for the bridge. For over half a century, Blakey never told a soul that visions of the first man he killed haunted him. I was critical of my children and my wife. I was mad, and I didn't know what about. I know I did things to them that I shouldn't have done because of the little man. In June, Blakey returned to Normandy for the 70th anniversary of D-Day. It was his eighth trip back. Thank you for serving, sir. Thank, Thank you, you for, for coming. everything you did. Thank you for coming. As long as I live, I'm going to want to go back to that bridge one more time. I'm with a bunch of friends that are not there anymore. I feel like I'm among them. The guys that, that was there, they're the only ones that know. And they're dying off so fast. We're down to less than a million. So I don't make any long time arrangements. The only appointment Blakey is certain to keep is back in New Orleans. He never misses his volunteer shift from 9 a.m. to noon at the National World War II Museum every day of the week. I think that's why I'm almost 94, because of the museum. I've been there for almost 14 years. Here we go. It's history. It tells the people today what an important part these young guys played in, in, their, in saving the nation. Well, my kids will tell you that it turned, it absolutely has turned me around. I'm not the person I was the first day I walked into that museum. That's where I was dropped. You were dropped? Yes. Parachute? Yes, ma'am. Wow. But we did it. We turned the Germans around and sent them back toward Northern. I woke up on a Wednesday morning, I got up and put my feet on the floor, and I thought to myself, how long have you been to the museum? Four months. Do you realize that you haven't seen the little man in that four months? No, by God, I haven't. Well, it's been 14 years since I haven't seen him since. The museum got him. He took him away from me. <laughs>